So we've looked at the supply side of the model and we've computed an aggregate supply curve using production function and beverage curve. Now we have to look at the demand side of the model. Um, so first step is to compute the recruiting wedge between uh, output that's purchased by uh, households and the amount of output that's actually consumed by households. And we know that in this type of matching model, there is a gap between consumption and output because part of the services that are purchased by households will be used for recruiting. Um, and these services that you use for recruiting, they are helpful to fill vacancies and get workers to work for your household, but they are not going to provide utility directly. Um, so consumption will be the services that produce you, that provide utility directly. Output will be this plus services that are used for recruiting. Um, so uh, the analysis is very similar to what we saw in the basic model. We'll have a recruiting wedge uh, that's going to tell us the gap between consumption and output. But we have to uh, modify the analysis a little bit because uh, of the dynamic nature of the model. Uh, and so in the dynamic model, things are just a little bit different. So we'll have a slightly different expression for the recruiting wedge. So that's what I want to compute uh, now. So um, in terms of notation, Uh, let's introduce a bit of notation for the uh, demand side. So <clears throat> we'll have a recruiting cost that we'll call rho. That's the recruiting cost. That's the number of services uh, required to maintain a vacancy. Uh, per unit time. So, so this is a flow cost. Um, so consumption will denote it by C. And so by consumption, we mean that it's going to provide, uh, provide utility. And it's strictly less than output. Output will denote it by YT. And it's going to be consumption plus um, recruiting services. And then we'll have a uh, recruiting wedge that we'll call tau. And we'll see it's only a function of tightness, um, as in the previous model that we, uh, that we studied. It's a recruiting wedge, and the recruiting wedge would be defined such that, uh, such that y of t, such that y is 1 plus tau of theta uh, c. Uh, so we'll define tau theta uh, like this. It's basically, it's telling us for, it's giving the amount of services amount of services required for recruiting per unit of consumption. Amount of services required for recruiting per unit of consumption. Uh, yes. So, uh, so that's what we have here. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I guess the last piece, of course, is that we'll have VT, which we have already introduced before, that the number of vacancies at time T. Uh, so for each household, but here we have a representative household, so um, that's also going to be the aggregate number of vacancies. So now the key thing is let's compute the recruiting wage. Because that's what's going to enter into um, budget constraint and aggregate demand and so on. So it's going to be uh, very important. Uh, all right. So the idea is that uh, so if you have a household that have V vacancies 
when we have v vacancies, then we have v q of theta uh, So here it's a dynamic model. So let's say you have V vacancy at time t, then you have V Q of theta employment uh, relationships that are created you know, at, at, at any time t. Uh, now, the key thing is that uh, we've assumed that we're always on the Bevouge curve. Okay. And on the Bevouge curve, what we know is that the number of uh, employment relationships that are created has to be equal to the number of employment relationships that are destroyed at any point in time. So we're on the Bevouge curve, so the, uh, the U to ease, so the flow from an employment to employment, the new relationships that are created has to be equal to the E to use. So the flows from employment to unemployment. So that means that VQ of theta, which is the number of relationships that are created at any point in time, has to be equal to lambda times L, the number of relationships that are uh, destroyed at any point in time. And in particular, what we learn from this is that for any uh, employment level uh, L, So if, you, if you're a household and you want to sustain uh, an employment L, you need to post at any point in time V is equal to lambda L Q of theta. So that's a key thing. So you know that firms here, uh, well, firms, household, which kind of act like firms, they employ their own uh, workers that work for the household. Uh, So household, if they want to support an employment L at any point in time, the number of vacancies they have to post is lambda L over Q theta. So, you know, when later on we focus on employment, we say that, oh, a household has an employment L, or in the aggregate employment level is L, we know that the number of vacancies that are in the background that are posted at any point in time is given by this expression. So V and L are isomorphic. If we know L, we know V. If we know V, we also know L through this relationship. That's why we don't need to keep track of both. Um, Okay, and so in terms of services now, oops. Uh, <clears throat> so if you want to sustain an employment L, the amount of services that are going to be uh, to be devoted to recruiting is uh, number of service required, it's rho v is going to be lambda rho l divided by q of theta. Uh, sorry, so here there was a little, uh, a little typo. So the recruiting cost is not the number of services required to maintain a vacancy per unit time, but here um, we are going to say that it's in fact the number of recruiters. will simplify things a little bit. So uh, the recruiting cost, number of recruiters required to maintain a vacancy per unit time. And what do these recruiters do? Well, we know they read CVs, uh, you know, they interview, candid they interview candidates and so on. So, you know, you can think of, uh, like say a household wants to hire a nanny, they have to read the CVs of all the nannies, they have to interview the nannies. Uh, and, you know, so it's going to take, uh, it's going to take time to do all of this. Um, so, in our, you know, butler analogies, the household will have some butlers whose job it is to interview other butlers uh, to recruit them for the household. Um, 
And so for each vacancy, you need row butlers. So city, we have consumption, okay, output, consumption plus recruiting services, recruiting wedge, we call it tough theta, amount of services required, VT vacancy, so all of this is right. You need that. Okay, so to sustain, um, so here, to sustain employment L, the number of recruiters required is, number of recruiters required is rho V is lambda, uh, rho L divided by Q of theta, where rho is the number of recruiters per vacancies. And therefore, the number of services uh, devoted to recruiting when employment is L, that's going to be so. You have raw V recruiters, and but then you know each recruiter has a productivity A. We said that any worker has a productivity A, they can churn out A services per unit time. So the number of services devoted to recruiting when employment is L, it's going to be A rho V, so it's going to be lambda rho A L divided by Q of theta. Um, and A times L, we know that that's uh, the number of workers in the household times their productivity, so that the output purchased by the household, so that's going to be lambda rho y divided by q of theta. Okay, and so from that, we can compute uh, the recruiting wage, so we have the link between consumption and output, so that's going to come directly here. So consumption C, it's output minus the amount of services devoted to recruiting, which here we said was Y times lambda rho divided by Q of theta. So C is just going to be one minus lambda rho divided by Q of theta times Y. And then if we divide both sides by one minus lambda rho divided by Q of theta, we get that Y it's uh, Q of theta divided by Q of theta minus lambda rho times C. Okay, and so this we can rewrite it as Y is equal to one plus lambda rho divided by Q of theta minus lambda rho C. Okay, that's just uh, exactly the same. And so this thing here, that's going to be what we call tau of theta. And so now we found that tau of theta of recruiting wedge is going to be lambda rho divided by Q of theta minus lambda rho. Okay, and so you notice that um, this is exactly the same expression as in the basic model, except that you have the lambda that, uh, except that you have a lambda that, repl that appears, whereas there is no lambda in the basic model. Uh, and that's just because in the basic model, we start with everybody unemployed. Uh, so in a dynamic model, if lambda is equal to one, uh, it means that, you know, everybody loses their job at any point in time. And so that, and then it means that everybody starts from unemployment and that's exactly the same as what we have in the basic model. That's why uh, these two expressions are, of course, very closely related. And, uh, you know, given the uh, properties of tau theta in the basic model, we can see that here they are exactly the same properties, given that this is the same as in the basic model. So this is the same as in the basic model, except that uh, lambda rho replaces uh, rho. Okay, but so, of course, this is just one parameter, you know, lambda rho is just one parameter that replaces another parameter. The properties are going to be um, just exactly the same. So in particular, we know that, uh, in particular, we know that tau of theta is increasing in theta. And of course, that's because Q of theta is in the denominator and Q of theta is decreasing in theta. Um, tau of zero. Uh, so when theta is equal to zero, 
Q of theta, what's very good that since we have cup Douglas, Q of theta is going to be infinite. So tau of zero is going to be equal to zero because Q of Q of zero is plus infinity here. Uh, remember that Q of theta is mu theta minus theta. So with cup Douglas, Q of theta goes to uh, infinity when theta goes to zero. So that's pretty simple. Uh, and then we can define uh, theta m such that Q of theta m is equal to lambda rho, uh, and then we know that, and then we know that tau of theta m is going to be plus infinity. Uh, okay, so exactly, exactly as in our basic model. Um, so we can just illustrate tau of theta just uh, so that we remember the properties, but. So if I put tau on the vertical axis, theta here, this is theta m, this is zero, tau of theta will just be something like this. It's going to be increasing and going to asymptote infinity at theta m. Um, so this is our recruiting wedge, and of course the recruiting wedge is going to show up, uh, it's going to show up the budget concern of the household, it's going to be important. What the recruiting wedge says here is that um, when the market is tighter, the working wage is bigger because when the market is tighter, it's harder to find workers. Um, the recruiting uh, rate is lower, so for each vacancy, it takes longer to fill any vacancy. So households have to devote more services, more recruiters to recruiting, and so that creates a bigger gap between consumption and output. When the market is slacker, it's easier to recruit. The gap is smaller, so recruiting wage is, is less. Um, but this is just saying that when the market is tight, it's a harder, it's a tough time to be. A buyer, when the market is slack, it's a good time to be a buyer. It's very easy to, uh, it's really easy to find workers. Um, always the same logic um, in any uh, matching model. Um, 